There's a powerful weapon for believers to use in a wicked world. But many believers don't really learn how to use this weapon to overcome just the simplest objects. Join us for a discussion about the most neglected Christian weapon, the altar of incense, on the way. Welcome to The Way with Leslie King and Scott Grimmett. See the ocean, how it sways in the sun. The altar of incense was first mentioned in Exodus chapter 30 when the Israelites built the tabernacle. If anyone knows anything about Exodus, it talks almost entirely about the children of Israel moving out of Egypt building the tabernacle and trying to establish their relationship with a God who was going to live with them in the desert, uh, in the tabernacle. Right. Now, Aaron was told to burn incense in the morning and at twilight every day. So there's something going on here that's very important because it's instructed by God. Right. And I think everyone kind of glosses over it because it's like, oh, this is kind of, you know, religious kind of thing going on. But there are some hidden things in here that become a shadow of what gets looked at throughout the Bible, and then there's a little bit of a capstone of it when it gets to uh, the the book of John's Revelation, right? right? And so, but the altar was supposed to be located just outside the Holy of Holies, right? And it was um, to where it the incense were to be um, made up of very special ingredients, and only the special ingredients instructed by God, and then to be able to. Light it, you couldn't just come up there and whip out your Bic lighter. No. Right? There was a very special place and fire you would have to take, and it was for the burnt offerings. Um, and so this is very interesting. And so God commanded the Israelites to be able to burn incense in the morning and at night and keep it burning all the time just before where he sat on his mercy seat. And it's just very interesting, this whole thing, because we're going to start to unpack this because this gets into not just smell goods or fun things like that, but it gets into the idea of a weapon that we need to be thinking about. Right. This is the beauty of reading the entire Bible. Mm-hmm. Because what we learn later on in Revelation is that uh, what you represented there was just a shadow and copy of a real thing in heaven. That's right. Just like the temple that David built, or mm-hmm. David and Solomon built. Right. Uh, that was a shadow and copy of something that was already in heaven. So was this. And this right. represented something seriously potent and powerful among God's ecclesia, God, among his children. And it's right. important for us to understand exactly how prayer works and how, to under, and how to understand what the Lord was actually doing here. So it's a good it's a good thing to dive into. Yeah, I think so too. And it's so neglected. Uh, most of us, and I think I'm at fault too, you know, I'll get too busy and forget to pray. Right. And it doesn't matter where you are, but it's the heart of how you approach God because, you know, he's he's not our chum. No, you know he's not somebody you can just give you know tongue in cheek to. Although you can commune with him right. in ways that are intimate and personal, right? But God, God never does anything without including His children, right. it, and that that is the reason why we have prayer the way we do. That's why it's a weapon like it is that God, when God set up His kingdom on this earth and He de- delegated authority to His children so that we could participate with Him in this. And that and prayer is an incredibly powerful tool in that regard. Absolutely. So we're going to kind of start off in Exodus chapter thirty. The very specific instructions on how to make up the incense, when to burn them, when to light them, you know, and this is a foreshadow of the prayers of God's people and how our prayers are supposed to go up to the throne of God, just like they did with incense smoke in the temple of God in the right. day. To understand prayer in its basic form, though, you you have to be reminded of the authority structure that God put into place Absolutely. with Adam at, at the very beginning. You have to go to the beginning without digging too much into the weeds on this, basically the long story short is that when God set up his uh, his his authority on earth th- through mm-hmm. Adam, right? Adam squandered that. Now, the, the earth is owned by God. God owns the earth. Yeah. He didn't relinquish his ownership to anyone. He still rules yeah. this place. Absolutely. But the authority that Adam lost uh, basically kicked off a conundrum through which God has to uh, operate, He and he yep. honors his own laws. So he wasn't right. he wasn't going to uh, completely just whitewash and negate what had happened at the garden. He works right. through us, and that is one of the reasons why prayer is so necessary. God mm-hmm. works through His children 
to work for the good of his children. That's right. And that's why prayer is so important, man. Whenever you hear, feel the unction of the, of the Holy Spirit to pray for someone, to actually lift someone in prayer. Absolutely. It's important to do it. It's important to do it correctly. It's important to have the right motivations when you do that. The right heart and the right spirit. And I think the Lord's Prayer really leans into that at yeah. some point. Jesus says, this is how you should pray. And he wasn't saying, copy me. No. He was saying, look at the heart of what I'm doing and how God is above all and you right. are not. With God working through the free will of individuals mm-hmm. all over the earth, you know, he, he could, we know that God could do anything he wanted. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. As Absolutely. the owner of the earth and as the owner of everything and as the <laughs> creator of all life, right. we all know that God, there's not a single thing that he couldn't do on his own if he wished it. But God has never chosen to do so. There is not a single instance since the beginning of creation all throughout the Bible where God basically right. decided, mm-hmm. I'm just going to do this on my own. Once in a while, he'll break in, and you'll see a miracle or something. Uh, yeah. But even in that, we see it done through the obedience of his servants. That's right. He, he works through his children. This whole earth is about Jesus. This is right. a, it, the word of the Lord working through his children. Absolutely. And I think you bring up a very important point here, and that is the fact of God gets glorified in an amazing way when he allows his children to illuminate his love, his mercy. And then, yeah, sometimes he shows up with some power and he flex some muscle. That's right. And we've got some examples of that we're going to go through. But at the same time, the greatest glorification that God receives is the fact that his children are participating right. through faith and through prayer and through dedication with the right heart in the right way at the right time for, with the right motives. That's right. And that's, that's the knife that the devil holds to the throat of humanity. Yeah. And that is the fact that we messed up in the garden. We are the ones who put this authority structure right. in place. We gave the devil what right. we should never have given him. Right. And the reason why the devil has has the audacity to work that way is because he knows that God does not break his own laws. Right. He His gifts are irrevocable. He doesn't take his gifts back, not even from the snake. He even right. has a diminished form of Absolutely. his own power. Yeah, he stays within the laws he, that he set up. He stays within the laws he set mm-hmm. up, and that is the that is the absolute wonder of prayer. Yeah. Because that is because what the devil can't stop, he can't stop Holy Spirit saying, "I need you to pray for this person. I need you to lift That's up right. a position, petition to the throne that I will honor. I'm right. I'm 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 allowed by my own laws to go in for my babies right. when someone prays on their behalf. And even though we rejected the authority and the image bearing of God in the garden when we decided to sin, we walked away from our image. He still honors it. He's still honors through, it. Through that kind of thing. So right. now let's look at the first couple of these. So we'll move kind of quick. The first one is basically provisional prayers. Search the personal motives of the individual. Now Jesus gave, gave us an example on how we should pray. And so we should appro- approach God with the fact that he's gone. We're not. Right. He provides mercy, sin, and provision. And we should bring that forward and ask for that for our personal provisions. And James right. tells everyone, you do not receive because you do not ask. And then when you ask, your motives are stingy right. and you're not getting anything because they're not right. Exactly. There's no room for narcissism. There, <laughs> That's there, right. There's no room for treating the Lord like he's some sort of a genie out of a bottle. You know, right. I have, I have, these are my three wishes for today, God. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, you, you cannot, uh, God cannot be mocked. So let's not be doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the heart of it, though, our prayers are conversational. And this is why it's so important to remain in, in right relationship with God. It's so important to, to keep it relational and not religion. Because right. when it's religion, you tend to fall back into this thing where if I do this, if I do that, if I the right off, sequence of things, not, the right things to touch, the, or the right things to touch, exactly, yeah, exactly. It's not like that, right? What, and it also shouldn't be like, "Hey, you're my homeboy," either. No, 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 right? no. So that, that was the whole thing about the altar of incense. We are actually engaging with the King of Glory. That's you are going right. into the presence of God Almighty. Absolutely. You know there there should be some reverence and some awe there. And I guarantee Absolutely. you, if in your heart you have reverence and awe before God as you lift these petition, petitions, this intercession becomes powerful. Absolutely, you, does. because suddenly you are honoring the King, and the King is going to take action. You offer your incense on your knees. You better believe it. But you do it in a way that he is our father and yeah. he's loving with that confidence. Right. Exactly. And so you make him proud of you. It's like exactly you show it. yourself to be an honoring son. You know, you are the son of the king right. of glory and you're showing your you're showing your father the honor he does rather than being a, a, a an oppressive thing. The king will will cherish what you are doing for him so that he Absolutely. can act on behalf of others. Absolutely. And that's important. So so as we look at the first kind, it's provisional prayer. 
And it really searches the motives personally of each one of us. Now, we don't always get everything we ask. <laughs> Why? Because he's loving and because I don't let my kids, when they were four years old, get pizza every morning or ice cream either. No, no, right? No. So provisional prayer. Provision where I approach him on my knees, on my face, in humility, recognizing he's holy, good, and awesome and provides everything. And then I pray according to the right motives, which should align with his motives. Right. And that's the first one we're looking at. So needed, that that is a pleasing aroma, if you will, or it's an incense, sweet incense, as it talks about in Psalms, right. uh, for him to do that. Now, the next one is going to be intercession prayer. Yes. And intercessory prayer, interesting enough, crosses time and space. Jesus actually prayed for um, the disciples right before he was to go on the cross, where he said, I pray for you, and Father, I pray for those that will hear their message. And so Jesus, right before he suffered and died, prayed for all of us that we would understand. So intercessory prayer is on the behalf of somebody else to receive provisions. Right. It's the, it's the highest form of prayer. It's the it, highest. Yes, it, it is. It, you, you, you cannot have... A, a higher task, a higher calling than to kneel down before, in the presence of God and call out an intercession for somebody else. For someone else. That moves the heart of God. Absolutely. The creator does. of all existence is waiting for just such a request because there's, it, it, it removes, it removes all inward thought, all selfishness. Mm -hmm. uh, and Absolutely. as we said earlier, all, all based narcissism. When you move the heart of God to compel to act, what you are actually doing is you are engaging within the construct of the legal confinements of the fallen condition That's of right. man that Jesus died to redeem. That's right. And Absolutely. he's going to honor what he did on the cross yeah. until the very end. Because he's interceding for That's us. That's right. With he's the interceding Father for right us. Right now. So <laughs> there's no bigger need. He's not up there praying for himself, right? No. When he was here, he did. He asked for provisions. Give me strength. Don't take the cup. If I will, I'll get in. And he did all that. But he's interceding. The Holy Spirit intercedes or has intercession with us. How can you call yourself a Christian if you're not praying for others? That's right. I can say you can't and you shouldn't. So, all right. So we're going to go on to the next one, which is a very interesting one. So we have two of them so far. We have provisional prayers that test the motives of my heart. And then there's intercessory prayer where I meet with God on behalf of another person. And there, it is not bound by time or space. I can pray forward generations with intercessory prayer and impact my family or your family two or three generations forward if I want to. Right. Because of the power of God who's not bound by time or space. Right, right. And remembering also that many of the times when we actually pray, it's Holy Spirit telling us what to pray. That's right. We don't even do that on our own. Right. The, the Holy Spirit will tell us, all right, remind us exactly what we need, what he wants us to pray over. Absolutely. If you are working with him, and it's, and it's not, it doesn't make it convoluted and it doesn't make it fake. What it makes it is it makes you in concert. It puts you in yeah. light concert with your king and with right. your God so that you're working with him. Yeah, it brings to you in accomplish unity with things. it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and as we grow in the faith, we should be aligning ourselves in our prayers more with God's, God's heart. And if we're not growing, we're not aligning more with his heart, which means we're going to pray for things and we're just not going to get it. Right. So, right. but like you said, God is not a genie in a bottle. No, no, he's not. So he, we've got these two levels we've talked about. The next one I think is the whole next level, but I think it actually gets into this idea that prayer, fasting, and worship is for personal mission. That's right. So we can pray to get, to get, to get. There's a whole nother level of prayer. And Paul and Barnabas were worshiping and fasting in Antioch with what? When the Holy Spirit said, set them apart right. for the mission I have for them. That's right. And we all should be doing that. Unless we make the time and the space in our prayer closet in our worship to hear what our mission is, we're not going to move forward with our personal mission. I'll tell you right now, I want that personal mission. I want to hear about it. Right, right. This is all about being in a relationship with the one who wants to work among us mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. accomplish to accomplish great things and to, to accomplish deliverance for someone that we yeah. may not even know. That's right. You, you, you feel un an unctioning to get out of bed in the middle of the night and pray for somebody. You have no idea exactly how powerful that might be. It may not do you any good. You may go to bed and wonder if you ever, if any of that ever was meaningful. That's right. But I guarantee you, someone else may, you may learn years later, my life was delivered that night. That was a huge moment Absolutely. for me. Absolutely. You may not even know about it until you get to heaven. That's right. Because this is about the great honor of working with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus Christ for making sure that the 
the, that he can work within the legal construct that he set up that the devil uses to hold the knife to our throat. Right. You know, that he, the, you, the devil hides behind the fact that the Lord God doesn't break his own laws. Right. So whenever we work with the Lord in this, we're partnering, partnering with him with this, and it is incredibly powerful. Uh, there, uh, you, you can't underestimate the value of, of being a son or a daughter that the Lord God can trust with this. You know what? So it's a weapon. Yeah. It's a weapon for us to fight for others, to fight for ourselves, but so that God can be glorified and get all the glory for that. And I think that... Communion. Um, Communion. That's right. right. Well, and I think that there is a level of, I think definitely this next one is as much about communing with him to be able to know, God, thank you for giving me everything I asked for, or at least allowing me to request it. I may not have got it all, but I understand you know better than me. But let me commune and let me connect with you and worship you while I ask, what can I do for you? Yeah, I'm, I guarantee you, Test the Lord on these things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something. Every single time that in history, look at look at Solomon as an example. Whenever you put somebody else's uh, needs and somebody else's uh, uh, need, uh, problems before your own, mm -hmm. the Lord God is the kind of uh, kind of individual who says, "You know what? You didn't ask for this, but since you didn't, I'll give it to you anyway. Yeah. I'm going to pour it out on you. You wanted this. I know you want this. I knew you need this. Right. But because you asked for things for others, and so before you, since you put others first, mm -hmm. that's how good his heart is. He's the kind of God who yep. says, you know what? You didn't ask for it. I know you want it. I'm going to pour it out on you. Well, and that's a real good note there because if we really trust God, it's nothing wrong with asking for provision. No. At the same time, if I really know he knows me and he knows what I need, yeah. I trust you. I'm going to focus on this guy, or I'm going to focus on going, God, send me on a mission. You know what the mission's for? It's not for me. The mission is for me to go help somebody. So being able to hear the Holy Spirit say, I'm going to set you apart for this mission during this time that's right. is extremely important. And that's going to be things that others might not realize or understand, but they are crucial to what we need to do when we hear that from God. Right, it's, and, and we must always understand and learn the lesson. If you don't, you're going you're gonna to keep hammering away on it until the Lord feels like that you have learned the lesson. And the lesson is, it's not about you. Right. That, that's the lesson we all have to learn. It's not Absolutely. about us. That's it's right. about our brothers. It's about our sisters. It's about people you may not even know right. around the world. Absolutely. People who are in that 1040 window who are getting... The, the you know the the living snot kicked out of them all yeah. the time by the enemy. These are the things that we lift incense that uh, fragrant incense of prayer for. We are given the great honor of conducting the business um, of of the Holy Father on behalf of His children. Absolutely, and, uh, we must not fail in this charge. And unless you're sending out prayer, that's that's like the Air Force. That prayer is the bombings that take place on the enemy and prepare the beach for landing. That's right. When you go forward. So to keep to that analogy, it's a weapon. It's not only for provision for myself. It's for provisions for anyone else. And it's also for getting the assignment in the envelope that says, please go to this person and tell them I love them. That's right. Or go tell them that they need me. That's right. And so being sent out through a kind of prayer and worship is that last one that we talked about, I think is just as important because then that turns that, that actually puts your boots on the ground to keep with the war analogy. Oh yeah. You know, or, as, or you, or, or you become that person uh, holding that laser for that guided missile. That's right. Uh, on the so ground. That's a good analogy. It, it, yeah, so. Because you're saying, you're, you're saying great, uh, great Holy spirit come among us as never before. That's right. Let the revival come that you're that guy on the ground with that laser in enemy Absolutely. territory saying, Lord send now, come now you come among us. Yeah. Yeah. And when that happens, I'm telling you, the Lord will rise up and he will come. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're going to move into just our final key concepts. And the first one is a shadow can shed great light in the darkness. And if you remember, the shadow from the Old Testament in the temple was the shadow of the altar of incense. Right. And it shed great light on what it's like in heaven because it talks about how there were incense burning before the throne of God in heaven and those incense, and it says those incense and the smoke were the prayers of the saints or God's people. And right. so we know there's a connection, all right? So prayer is an offering of humility and not of selfish demand. Remember right. just to humble ourselves before him and come into his arms, and you don't go into anyone's arms by walking up and having your chest all bolted out, no. right? Yeah. So uh, the next one is intercession is a face-to-face -face meeting with God for God to glorify God. That's right. So that 
everyone gets to see who God is because now all of a sudden you're not being selfish. That's right. You know what selfishness does? It doesn't shed any light or reflect any light that God has. No, for their good and for his glory. Right, that, absolutely. That should be everyone's mod- modus right. operandi. Intercession goes beyond space and time and is not bound by them. Right. And that's an important thing I think everyone should think about. Fasting and prayer is not a bribe. No. Like a lot of people think, if I fast hard enough or whatever, I'm going to convince God to hear me. No. It's to bring clarity for a personal mission that we're supposed to be on. And so fasting and prayer is so that we get out of in front of ourselves in receiving the mission God has for us. Right. And that's extremely important, I it's, think, as we move forward. It's a very powerful tool, but like you said, it's it's a focusing mechanism. It's a focusing focusing for God doesn't need to focus. No. no. Right. So. It's, 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 it's us focusing on what we need to be saying and Absolutely. doing and participating in with him. So right. that he can move on somebody else's behalf. That's right. Absolutely. All right. That was a great discussion about the most neglected weapon we Christians have. Right. And we really need to bring this in. It's a discipline. It's a spiritual discipline that needs to be brought forth a lot more during these times and in the future. Right. We just want to thank everyone for joining us. We do invite you to come visit us at thetruthandthelife.com. And we want to thank you for joining us on the way. To learn more about The Way, visit thetruthandthelife.com. Send me a sense of tomorrow.